Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 133. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome. If you're new here, say hi down below. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we sit down on a couch or a bench right. just to talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So I see my old phone sitting right there and my new phone is sitting here. Can we just not do keto on the couch no. so I can play with my new you phone? You need to be present right here and later you can play with your phone. I know you're excited though. I'm, I'm always excited. I'm excited when I, are you excited when you get a new phone or a new TV or a new computer? Shoes. You're excited when you get new, new shoes. New fun sneakers or a new fun shirt or a new hair bow is always exciting. For Why me. is your watch on the outside of your... Because this shirt... That oh, I, that's cool. It's got my hands. I feel like I'm ready to, to do some lifting. I'm excited about it. I'm going to try to do some uh, push-ups with some help like Bronson has mm -hmm. shown us mm -hmm. because that was always something I couldn't do Right was, was pull-ups, but I can do them assisted. That's something that Bronson probably gets excited when he gets a new piece of workout gear. Let us know down in the below what purchase gets you super excited where you want to drop everything and go play with that pork, purchase. Pork belly. Pork belly? Right? I just want to eat pork belly. But don't you get excited when you see a perfect slab and you're like, I'm going to turn you into bacon. When you go to Costco and you're fiddling through all and you're like, yeah, no, wrong shape. Yeah, no, too thick. Ooh. Just right. That's going to make some good bacon. The Goldilocks of pork belly. Speaking of food, how are you feeling as we approach, I guess, the midway to almost end of the week of the first week of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. I feel absolutely incredible, not just in my body. Mm -hmm. I feel good in my mind. Mm -hmm. I feel like we are helping to undo some hangups that yeah. I have had with food for a really long time. Yeah, that's something I'm experiencing. And we don't want to get too much into it because we do have an entire playlist because we are vlogging every single day, which is a huge undertaking. But we yeah. think it's really important to document our journey. That playlist is going to be right over Rachel's head. And you can watch from day one all the way up to whenever you're watching this video. But it is definitely unlocking some of the things because some of the hangups that I know I've had in Rachel experiences, a lot of the same ones, is overeating. Uh, a lot of people you hear in keto, like you're not going to be successful unless you intermittent fast, which is something that Dr. Barry's like, throw all of that out the window. Eat as much as you want. Eat as many times a day as you want. Just only eat from these four things, right? Yeah. And it's really messing with me because I feel like I'm not supposed to be eating. I feel like I always gain something when we put ourselves through a personal challenge. Mm -hmm. I think we need to, I remember doing the reverse diet mm -hmm. that we did with, with Keto that Savage. That was scary. And, and contemplating the thought that I could have more than the thousand or 1200 calories that a woman is supposed to have you know, a day. And I don't think that I could have gotten to where I am here without us first going through that challenge. So right. there's always something that I, I learn and I love the fact that I'm never too old to be open to new things. Yeah. Now, a couple of comments that have come up in the posts on the actual videos for the beef, butter, bacon, and egg challenge. Number one, some people curious about sodium, like, are you eating too much sodium? Had a few negative comments. We've had to delete bashing sodium. So to address that, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to point you to a video that Dr. Robert Sywis, the carb addiction doc, just recently put out. I'm going to leave a link for it up here. And that video, and Dr. Barry has one as well, but in that video, he talks about how you basically cannot overeat sodium. Your body's going to get rid of it. And the bigger culprit to high blood pressure is under eating sodium. So definitely go take a look at that video. It's an eye opener. And even when we talked about that during our live stream, there's a few comments already popping up saying like, wow, now I'm looking at some of my labs and my doctor said my blood pressure is high and my sodium level is low. Well, let's, what if we 
increase the sodium and now all of a sudden your blood pressure goes up. So it's, it's a really interesting video. So go take a look at it. I love the fact that you can watch what we're doing and see what regular ordinary people can do with themselves. But I love getting to point you guys to real medical doctors because yep. we're not a medical doctor no. and we're not trying to make any claims for that. We're just showing our personal journey. Right. But I love being able to point you to doctors that can, you know, let you see the whole picture. And that's what we say all the time. Listen, you, you want medical, well, they're not even giving you medical advice. They're gonna give you some medical opinions based on their own knowledge, but they're never gonna tell you exactly what to do with your life. That's up to you to decide and discuss with your physician if that's something you're looking to do. Yeah. But we love being able to point you to Dr. Barry, Dr. Boz, Dr. Cywis, and other people, you know, Dr. Jamie Seaman. Let them give you some medical, not advice, but opinions yeah. on different things. And then we're gonna hold your hand through it. We're gonna give you the support that you need. And that's why we love working with all them and they're also amazing. Now, one thing about all of that is that we decided, we, we took a couple of days because we had a bunch of stuff going on, but on Monday, the day this is releasing, we're gonna be going and getting some labs. So it will be a weekend, but I'm interested to see like where are our labs right now? And we're gonna get basic labs, we're gonna get um, we're gonna get A1C, we're gonna get our insulin, our glucose, and then a lipid panel. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna check it again when we're done with this whole thing and see what happens to them. Do they improve? Do they remain the same? Do things go up? So I'm really curious to see how all of that goes. Me too. The other thing that a lot of people have been asking about is things like, you know, butter and heavy cream. And, and so Dr. Barry basically picked the four things of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, because those are things that we tend to not binge on right. outside of our eating window, right? Yeah. When we're, you think about what are foods that you've binged on, cheese and potato chips and, and wings. And, and so you wanted to give you something that you wouldn't normally binge on. Not that the other stuff is bad, but he's like, if you stick to these basic things, you're not gonna gain a bunch of fat. Well, and I love the fact that chicken's not a part of it. It's not because chicken is bad. I mean, he talks about it being too lean. Too lean. But I have a history with chicken nuggets. Mm -hmm. And I have found what is at the bottom of a Tyson's, you know, beer battered chicken nuggets bag. Right. So I actually like the fact that um, we're not doing chicken. I, me and chicken ha have a little bit of history. Right. So when I'm keeping it in its proper place, that's fine. But when I am starting out in an, you know, eat as much as you want challenge, I need to really be looking at, you know, foods I've had a problem with in the past binging on. Well, for me... Chicken is a diet food. Mm -hmm. If that's, that's interesting. first of all, I grew up where we did not eat beef in our house. We never ate beef. We ate chicken. Why? Because I grew up in a time where beef was demonized. You needed to eat lean. You needed to eat low fat. And so through my entire life, I just never really ate beef until I met Rachel. And then when I started keto, I really got into beef. But when I want to lose weight when I need to start worrying about like, oh my gosh, am I eating too much fat? I always revert to chicken because chicken, especially chicken breast is very lean. And so in my mind, chicken is a diet food. Yeah. And like Dr. Barry said, chicken is very lean even when you're eating the skin. And he wants you to know that it's okay to eat fatty meat, eating that one-to-one -one ratio. So I'm excited about that. Now that brings up something else, another question that has been coming up a lot, and that is, well, isn't eating beef, butter, bacon, and eggs expensive? Like, where's your grocery bill gonna go? Right. right? And I don't know about y'all, but the price of beef is going up. But we have found deals. Yes. And, and that's the thing, when you are on the look for deals, you find them. Yep. Even without deals though, here's what I wanna say, because we've got a couple of deals and we do have a freezer full, but we went to buy a ribeye from Aldi and it was $17 for one steak. Right. And we each need a steak. Well, now we're looking at $35. At that point, I might as well just go out to Texas Roadhouse and get, the steak and there. get a prime rib for 20 bucks and let them do all the cooking and everything. So, I have been sort of keeping track of how much we're spending and believe it or not, I believe we're spending less now only eating beef, bacon, butter, and eggs at full price than we were even prior to starting this 
if I were to take out some of the things that we were eating on a regular basis, things like my NOLA bars yeah. or things like our zip fizzes, mm-hmm. if you add all of that stuff, again, not saying any of that stuff is bad, but if you add all of that up, I really believe it comes down to about the same amount of money. So here's what we're gonna do for week two, which is going to start, I guess, Monday morning. Right. Is when we're gonna start week two. For week two, keep track. We're going to keep track of how much we spend on every meal and everything we put in our I mouth. I love that. So this way, at the end of the week, we're gonna look and see how much have we spent eating beef, bacon, butter, and eggs. Now, you don't have to eat ribeye, right? No. You could eat cheaper cuts of meat. You can get brisket, even though it's not nearly as cheap as it used to be. You can still get a pack of brisket for Roasts. about four to five dollars a pound. You can get roast. You can get ground beef. Cube steak. 85, 15 to 80, uh, to 80, 20. That's a perfect one to one. It's got enough fat to give you some flavor, especially when you get into 80, 20. You can still get that for between two to four dollars a pound. So right. it shouldn't cost you a lot of money. And if you don't want to eat the expensive eggs, which eggs have not gone up in cost. No, thank goodness. You can get them for as cheap as a dollar a dozen, up to $5 a dozen if you want the really good pasture-raised eggs. So it really shouldn't cost you that much more money. Well, and it's always good to plan ahead, Mm -hmm. right? Do you notice that when you have a hankering for something, you go to like Publix for their buy one, get one deal. That thing that you're wanting in that moment is never buy one, get one. It's always, you know, when you're planning ahead. So I think that as you decide to make different decisions, in your kitchen, you can plan for it in your freezer yeah. and be ahead. When you see a deal, go ahead and take advantage of that because you're you know planning future meals. It's never cost effective right. to like go to the grocery store every single day. It's it's not. It's not a and good thing. And the plan best thing to do is shop the deals. And the other thing is, is you may notice, at least I've experienced this when we got started on keto, that as your body heals you're spending less money on maybe medications or or other things. And it's just a shift in money. And the bottom line comes, where are you willing to put your money? Would you rather spend an extra $100 a week on food? And and that's a lot of money. But let's say, would you rather spend $100 less a week or give that $100 to a doctor to go to doctor's visits and things like that? So you're going to spend it somewhere probably. Why not just put it into the food? Well, it was interesting. I was cleaning out uh, one of our closets and I threw out a bunch of like acid reflux medicine Mm -hmm. that I used to take all the time. It expired three years ago. And we still took it. And we, I mean, we were just taking it, you know, when I was still struggling with that. And I would buy it whenever I saw it on deal because it was very expensive. It's not cheap medicine and I needed it all of the time. So there was a huge investment in, you know, in one of our closets for that. And that's money I don't spend anymore. That, That is, you know, 15 and $20 a month. That is just, in my ribeye budget now and is not, you know, I'm, I'm having to take it after every single meal because it was painful. Right. If you've ever had acid reflux, very, very painful. And I'm gonna give you one, I'm almost ashamed to admit this. Okay. But on a daily basis, Anthony and I go to Wawa or a gas station to get a drink when we're out on the road for work or going to games or something like that. And I tend to get my big cup. Right and I fill it up with some type of drink. Sometimes it's seltzer water, sometimes it's like a Diet Coke, sometimes it's iced tea. Well, right now, the only thing that I can have other than water would be seltzer water, so long as there's no sweetener, because we're not allowed to have sweeteners. That refill used to cost me 99 cents. So that's $7 a week that you're not spending. It's up to $3 now. Like, Cause I don't know if y'all have seen the price of soda what? recently, but even soda is up to like six, $7 for a 12 pack when it's not on sale. So let's just cut that in half. To, let's, let's take the lesser, we were paying a dollar, now it's up to three, so let's say $2 a day. So right there, I'm saving $14 a week. If you say I only get it for five or six days, that's $10 a week. That instead of putting it into buying that fountain soda, which is not good for me. How many dozen eggs could you buy with $14? I can get a couple of pounds of ground beef. That's at least three pounds of ground beef right there. And if you eat a pound of ground beef every single day, you're doing really a pound of ground beef and a half a dozen eggs. There's a meal, right? Maybe a few slices of bacon. When you said you're like ashamed to admit it, I thought it was, you were talking about, and now I'm, I'm, I'm outing us. The other medicine that I threw out that was in the closet, Beano. 
Oh. Because you would take that and there would be no gas. Right. Because gas was a thing. It was. Pre-keto. I mean, we would joke and be like, you know, dad would start to go like this and all the kids would be like, we know what's happening next. And so, yeah, that's another thing that we don't have. Um, we don't have it. And even if you do have a little bit of gas, it's 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 not smelly, right? It's just, no. it's like air coming out. It's not like we have to sell the house now. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's take a quick commercial break and then we'll come back with all of our comments. I have no coffee for this keto on the couch because I've already drank my one cup. I really thought you were going to leave today's coffee for keto on the couch, but I, no. I, I needed it because I was a nervous Nelly, not because I needed to wake up, but I needed to hold something comforting as we try to integrate the baby chickens into our backyard flock. It's a nail biter and I can't bite my nails. That was very interesting. Right now they're all running around out there, but they're in their separate corners. And Rachel was actually doing the premiere for our interview with Abby from House of Keto. And I went out there and I'm like, I can't find them anywhere. I couldn't find the babies. And I'm like, did I see feathers inside of the bottom of the hen house? That's so scary. But I don't think it's the baby's feathers. I think it's, it's molting the from one of the other ones because they're like a brownish orange color and none of the babies have that brownish orange color. Have we but ruffled was, their feathers with <laughs> the adult chickens? I was freaking out going, did they get eaten to the point where there's nothing left? Because chickens can do that. Yeah. Or did they parkour over the fence? Anthony's like, they can't parkour. I'm like, the other ones can. Anthony did come in and he's like, mommy, the, the, you know, the chickens are bullying the babies. Like, yeah. basically, are you going to step in and do something about that? And it's like. It's, it's, it's just a part of, you know, so, life, but it's hard to watch. But so I did hard. find them off in the corner. So they're still, they're separate in the group. So I'm glad that we have. We're supposed to have four and three, but it's really three and three because, of course, the one doesn't come out of a roosting box no. except for when we put some fresh food out She's there. She's in there laying on someone's egg. It's like or nobody's egg. We have no rooster. That that egg is never going to hatch. You, you can sit there forever. all day long. It's, it's not just... going to. It's kind of like me with exercise. Like I put on my shoes, but that doesn't mean exercise is happening. Like right. you have to get up because right. it's just never going to happen on the couch. Yeah. So let's get into the comments. So this is the segment. If you are new to our channel. Uh, for Keto on the Couch, where we like to celebrate subscribers. When we came up with the idea of Keto on the Couch, it really was to celebrate you guys, to share your wins, because kind of like, you know, a little thing for us, we enjoy your wins and it motivates us. It so really it's a does. little selfish for us. It's super selfish. You know, but we need your wins to keep going. Without hearing your wins, without hearing your success stories, we get down and it's not even that we don't want to do like the channel anymore. We just don't want to do keto. So right. you guys keep us going. So please keep sharing your out. wins. So the first part we have is our Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. And this comes from our Facebook family group. And it's a post that somebody put up that we find very inspirational. And this week's is from Janice. Hey, Janice. And Janice said, there was an article in a local newspaper about how keto was bad for you. So I called the reporter and then this happened. <gasps> I was trending on Google and in the Yahoo news feed, wow. never giving up the cause. I now have contacts from coast to coast. Just want to share to encourage you to spread the word. You may be the person that changes a life or many. And it was an article from a newspaper about her 70 pound weight loss journey. I am so proud of you for being bold enough to share that. Yeah. Because I think about that with Abby from House of Keto. What mm -hmm. a, what an impactful interview we got to have with her. And I, I, I don't normally say this. If you have the opportunity to share that video from this week on your social media, we don't have to be mean about it. Just like, hey, this really inspired me. And share that video. We need to hear other people's stories. Right of success that instead of just being angry in our home, like that's not true. I know keto works. Don't just stay there, Right. share it, share the truth that's happening in your body. So thank you for sharing your story. So if you get a chance, head on over to her Instagram or to her TikTok, which is where she is the most active. Let her know you appreciate her sharing her story, appreciate what she does. And you can also let her know that we, we sent you over there. Okay, so the next thing we have is our subscriber of the week. And again, these are people who've had some kind of change, whether they've been doing keto for a day, a week, a month, or a year. And again, we ask you to share your story because like we were just talking about, your story is going to impact someone. And I know you're thinking, nobody cares. They do. Everybody cares. And there's somebody right now that is going through exactly what you're going through or what you've gone through. And when they hear your story, they're gonna be like, oh, 
Keep going. Okay, somebody knows how I feel. I can keep going. And the first one we have is from Marianne. Hey, Marianne. Very simple post. She said, starting weight 304 from May of 2018. My current weight is 204. I'm almost 67 years old. Finally lost 100 pounds. I have five more pounds to my next goal. Wow. You look so incredible. I am so proud of you, girl. So proud of you. And super jealous about how long your hair is. <laughs> that is some gorgeous, gorgeous hair. And I'm sure that keto has helped with that as well because it has absolutely, for me. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, the next one we have is from Becky. Hey, Becky. Becky said there are not a lot of before pictures. We've got that. The first one was taken with my daddy a few months before we learned Scarlett would join us. The second was today as Billy and I met our why for the first oh. time. We were both so sick, we were afraid we wouldn't get to be a part of her life. So we changed together since January 3rd of 2021, 135 wow. pounds down and so much gained. We both have a way to go, but we believe we can make it. We don't need easy. We just Amen. need possible. My 60th has been a good year. Oh my gracious. Wow. Talk about a why. Wow, what an incredible motivation. <laughs> How precious, congratulations. That just makes everything different. That, that clears the path. I mean, if you had an excuse left, I want to be around for that baby. Can we just end keto on the couch yeah, right here? Yeah, I, I feel like, like done, that's... Done, done, over with. That's all we need to see. We thank everybody for sharing their stories. And again, the best way to share the story is to head on over to our Facebook group. There is a link down below. I think there is... More than 9,000 people. More than 9,000, approaching 10,000 people. And there's no keto police in there. We have some awesome moderators. There's nobody in there telling you to go join some multi-level marketing company. It's a great place. Now, if you don't have Facebook and you want to share your story, which again, we really encourage you to please share your story. You don't even have to have a picture to share your story. You can send it to stories at twocrazyketos.com. Now, something I was thinking about that, I was looking at, you know, like the breakdown and the analytics, you know, within that Facebook family group. And I saw that, you know, within the last month, we've had more than a hundred new people join that family, that mm -hmm. online family. And I got so excited because I thought here is a hundred people who maybe have not experienced the welcome mat mm -hmm. of this family. They yeah. haven't seen like, wow, there are people that, that care that I woke up this morning. There are people that care about my journey. There are people here that genuinely want to friend me. And I get very excited, not that they get a closer relationship with us, but that they get a closer relationship with you because you guys are what make people's days change yeah. for the better. I mean, when we were at Keto Palooza, it was amazing. And if you have the opportunity to go next year, please go. What Autumn has created is amazing. I mean, honestly, we couldn't even duplicate it if we wanted to. But one of the things we love about Autumn is she really has the same goals for this community that we do. She yeah. just wants to have this tight knit, unified family that's going to support each other, which is why so many of our subscribers also subscribe to Autumn and to Keto Chow. Yeah. And you can see this intertwining there. But it was so amazing to head to Keto Palooza and sit there and meet all of these people who we've only known virtually, right? We've only known by seeing their name or their picture come up. And it was funny because you'd have to meet like, what's your online handle? Right. right? But you mentioned it during the live stream to see like Hungry Heath sitting across the dinner table Next to, to slap a stick keto and other people, people who they've only talked to like online and now they're in real life friends. To see Shauna hanging out with Rachel and with or Miriam Susan. or with Susan, to see people walking across that bridge with people who they've never met yet holding hands and cheering them on. Yeah. That's what this is about. We need community. I don't even want you to go to a conference to like hear from the speakers, though the speakers are awesome. The community is what's going to help you keep going. And that's, that's the day to day love. That's why we're flying out to Las Vegas. We're flying at our own expense. We're staying in the hotel at our own expense. And we're going out there to keep this community going because we haven't been out to the West Coast and we want to get out there. So, again, if you are anywhere near the Las Vegas convention, we don't want to miss you, is the middle of October. All of the information is down below. Please, please, please come join us. 
We're gonna be in there from like Thursday afternoon on. I know Autumn is gonna be there. I know Eric is gonna be there. Bronson is gonna be there. So excited. None of us are speaking. We're just going out there to hang out with this community. Because we love you and we are super glad that you are breathing in and out today. That's right. I am just glad that you're alive. Let's get into the comments. The first comment from YouTube is from Slap a Stick. Hey, Christopher. He said, yes. Share your story. Share it with anybody who will listen and with those who won't listen. Share it with people who have never heard it and those that have heard it a million times. Share it with people who have medical issues and those who don't yet. Share it with the carnivores, the vegans, and everyone in between. Don't be quiet about it. That is so powerful, Christopher. We need that because yes, big pharma, they're loud. You know, the, the medical industry, they have the money and the resources and, and the blocks of time and the commercials to be able to ram their way of eating and what they want to propel their agenda down everyone's throat. Mm -hmm. So us just saying, hey, I did what they said to do and it did not work for me. I did the, you know, the, 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 the high, you know, carbs and low fat diet. It didn't work. They right. need to see the testimonials that are not manipulated. Right. And Dr. Barry said it best at Keto Palooza and he said, listen, Big Pharma, they have lobbies. We don't have lobbyists. No. We have each other. So when we go out there and share a story and we're making an impact, when you share your story with your doctor lovingly, yeah you're going to make a difference. You may not think you're making a difference, but when you go in and your doctor says keto doesn't work and you go from like Shelly from an A1C of 13 something to five something, you, you can look at lovingly that. say to your doctor, have you ever seen this before? I mean, Dr. Bear is like, that doesn't happen. And he's like, there's no medication to take your A1C from a 13 to a five. He's like, there. The only way you take your A1C from a 13 to a five is if you somehow fall into a keto pool, right? Right. So when you start having all of these changes and then you go to your doctor, even if your doctor isn't on board, what it does is it raises their eyebrows. They start going, hmm. there's gotta be something to this. Let me start researching more. And yeah. that's how we're gonna make an impact. I have, a, I have an armpit cat. You have an armpit cat? Okay, next one is from Lisa. Hey, Lisa. She says, trying to pay attention, but I feel like a feline with a laser following Rachel's <laughs> sparkling hat. I don't even wear caps, but I need a shiny pink one just like that, Rachel, now. I need a glittery dress and matching shoes, too, just like Rachel. Definitely glitter is my favorite color. Mary it had is. said that before. Like, glitter is my favorite color, and that's very true for me. Uh, next one is from Mrs. Uh, Venard. Nice. Says, a it appears that our scale broke this morning. Aww. My husband put new batteries in and it's still not working. My non-scale victory today is that I am not rushing out to purchase a new scale. So good. I'm going to live without one for a while and just keep doing the things that I know are moving me forward without the scale telling me I'm doing a great job. I am, I'm doing a great job without the scale is telling me I am or not. That is so good. So. I really wanted to get on the scale this morning. But the scale is the devil and, and the, the mirror, mirror is a liar. liar. And I was sitting there thinking like, you know what? I'm just going to get get on it. But there was something about the accountability of this challenge that I said I'm not getting on the scale until this is over. So you guys keep me accountable. So I will follow the rules of this challenge and not get on it. I have to trust that if I am eating the right foods, that this will work. And it is so scary, the thought of the scale going up, but I am not quitting right. this challenge. So why torture myself? That's right. Why not just let it do what it's supposed to be doing? Because it may go up before it gets goes down. Doesn't everything get, get worse before it gets better? Right. When I start exercising, aren't I sore right. before I start to see, you know, muscle development? Of course. Right. And the thing is, is you, you're healing yourself. If you're really doing the beef, butter, bacon, and egg, the way Dr. Barry has suggested, which is no sweeteners, not even stevia, you are essentially eating zero carb. I mean, there may be a couple of carbs in an egg, but believe me, you're not gonna get near 10 or 20 carbs, even if you only eat eggs. You're not gonna be able to keep that many eggs in you. Right. So you're essentially eating zero carb. Your body only has one place to go. Unless you're gonna just do nothing but eat sticks of butter, you will heal. Yeah. 
again, the reason we're saying don't get on a scale is because if you get on the scale and you do see that increase, and we've noticed a couple of people say, well, I got on the scale, I'm up two pounds, I quit. That's the problem. That That's why we're saying don't get on the scale. Trust the process. Is it hard? Absolutely. But yeah. I can tell you without even getting on the scale, I don't know what the scale says. But I can tell you, I feel better. I feel, good. I feel like I'm slimming down. Rachel said to me today, like, and we took a picture hot, three baby. days ago. And I said, she's like, why don't we take a picture and see if you see a difference, even though it's only three days in. I feel better. So if at the end of this challenge, I feel better and my pants are looser and my shirt is looser, if I'm up 10 pounds, does it matter? And now I know I probably at one point would say, yes, it matters. And I'm sure a lot of you would say, yes, it matters. But if you're healthier and you feel better and you're off of medications, who cares what the stupid scale says? Because again, and that was really brought out by Bronson, we're not chasing a smaller bathing suit. We're chasing quality of life. That's right. Am I enjoying my life? Am I able to do all of the things that I want to do and not be limited by how I feel? Right. Okay, next one is from Gene. Hey, Gene. He says, what a great motivation to hear my story read by someone else. My frustration is my weight fluctuations. I've um, heard you say many times that the scales are the devil and I shouldn't worry if I'm doing the right things with regard to what I'm eating. My pants do feel looser, but a lifetime of dieting has ingrained in me to weigh in every morning. I'm going to commit to myself, no scales for seven days to start. You Be got this. Before keto, my A1C was slowly climbing every six months with my doctor's checkup. Last reading was 7.3. I can't wait for my December checkup. Jean, we are so proud of so you. Proud and of yes, you. that's the problem. It's been ingrained that you have to worry about that scale number. But as I've said before, The Rock, he weighs a bit more than me. Yeah. A lot more than me. I would like to look like The Rock, even if means that scale number says I can't go on a ride at Universal Studios. Right. I would love to look like The Rock. I don't look like The Rock. I probably weigh about 100 pounds less than The Rock. But muscle doesn't weigh nothing. That's right. Yeah. And so I know it's really, really hard to not get on the scale, but we really, really have to trust it. And you've got this. You are doing so well. I'm so proud of, I see your progress pictures, and we're just going to keep going and trust the whole process. Uh, next one is from Yvette. Hey, Yvette. She says, thinking about going to Vegas, just not sure if I can swing it. Also, I'm pretty shy until I get to know you, so I worry about that. Okay, so we're going to say this to everybody, and I know we say it a lot, but we're going to say it again. If you see us, please stop us and say hello. Please, we're nobody. No. Okay? We're nobody. And I got news for you. If you see Dr. Barry in the middle of Disney World and walk up to him, Stop him. he's going to give you a big hug. Yeah. He is going to be happy when you walk up to him and say, do you know the impact you've made on me? It's amazing to see the humility in all of the people within the keto space. You got a friend in me. <laughs> I'm always excited to see you. So you're not coming to the conference with no friend there. You know, right. that's always hard when you come into a space and you're like, where is where is my group? Is there any, you know, I remember going to like SAT prep classes and thinking this would be better if I knew somebody here in this class and I would go into this big auditorium and I know no one. Right. And it was very like, where do I sit? Who do I talk to? Like, right. this is so weird. That's not the case. Right. You know us. So if we're going to be in an event or if Autumn is at an event, Bronson's at an event, you know, Erica from Beautiful Girl Con Keto is at an event, like come up and talk to us because we're, we're there for you. Yeah. The one exception may be, please don't come up to me at the urinal in the restroom or something yeah. like that. Shake hands but, right there. <laughs> but other than that, please, we're, we're nobody special. We're two dummies who decided, hey, Let's start a YouTube channel as a joke. Yeah. I mean, that's, we just care about people. So please, please, please never be afraid to come up and say hello to us if you see us on the street or at some type of a conference. Uh, next one is from Donald. Hey, Donald. He says, we are booked for Vegas and we can't wait to meet you both. Coming in from Southern California. So excited. That is so awesome. Donald, we're I cannot excited. wait. Uh, next one is from Vicky. Hey, Vicky. Vicky said, my dad also died with Alzheimer's. He drank tons of milk and he loved processed food. That's all that he would eat. I've known about this lifestyle since January of 2020 and I'm 64. I've lost 100 pounds, wow. 20 pounds left. 
I'm definitely going to be accepting the beef butter pork challenge. Thank you for all you do. Vicky, thank you so much for sharing your story. We And I love when everybody like adds their age to it because somebody is just reading that story and they're precisely 64 years old mm -hmm. or they're precisely 78 years old and they have used age they're, they're it's it's an ageism on ourselves that's right that we think that there's no way if i am this age success is over the that's possibility right. of change or reversal in our health diagnosis is no longer a possibility because we've reached the age when we should accept that we're going to deteriorate yeah. so it's very important for someone to say like hey I'm in my 60s and 2021 is my year because yep. things can happen for the good. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Pat. Hey, Pat. Pat said, I so identify with many things you share. I too have been identifying my triggers. I spent so much time and money trying to replicate them. Thank you for saying that you need to severely limit having them around. Wow. I feel I felt guilty consuming so much of them. I'm very free. It's very freeing to know that other people struggle with this as well and that the right decision is to cut them out totally, or at least for the most part. Thank you for sharing your personal journey and not wrapping it up in perfection. Mm, thanks for that, Pat. I'm 10 pounds above my lowest weight loss. I've lost 102 pounds, but now I'm only 92 pounds below my starting weight from two and a half years ago. Your comments today have really hit home for me, and I now know what I need to do to get back on track. Cheese is hard for me to give up. I'm able to stay with just hard cheeses like cheddar, but we'll try the BBB and E challenge just to clear my addictions to other foods. Thank you again for all you share. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. That is very precious for us. It's nice to know that we're not alone and that you guys don't expect perfection from us because we're going to let you down if mm -hmm. that is what you're expecting. And we're going to let ourselves down right. if we feel that that is the standard. And going to Keto Palooza, it's always a little challenging because personally, I'm always concerned that if people see me in real life, they will be disappointed yeah. in me because they'll be like, "You're you're you're not fun. You're not cute. Like I I, I don't like you. I, I thought I I think I liked you at a distance much better than I like you close up." And you know that is Rachel hangups from elementary school on. Mm -hmm. So I'm really thankful that people can love me right where I'm at, and we love you right where you're at, and whatever you know, your past hang up was, we're just excited and celebrating the fact that you're dealing with your issues. That's very brave. Yeah. And we all have different issues. And it's, it's important that we don't try to put other people in, in the same classification as us. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just too hard to be fake. And, you know, we do share our struggles why because if number one when we admit our struggles to you guys it helps us grow yeah. so some of it is again selfishness it's if i don't say it to anybody it doesn't exist yeah. but now i'm telling you hey i'm struggling with it i'm getting it out there it's it's like admitting your addiction the truth sets us free and you know maybe we don't struggle with the same things that other people do like i personally don't struggle with the desire to eat a bunch of sugar or to eat a bunch of bread or to eat pizza and carbs that i used to eat what do I struggle with? Sneak eating, overeating, um, eating lots of nuts, wanting to have a lot of snacks, um, especially in the car. I, I, my biggest struggle is boredom eating. Like driving home from Kentucky was difficult for me because I'm used to when we're in the car, you just have unlimited food. But on the beef, butter, bacon, and egg challenge, there's only so much you can have. Yeah, It's pretty much hard boiled eggs and beef jerky or, or hamburgers. And as you're driving, you don't want to stop every hour. So you get full real quick eating those few things and, and you're not snacking on things that are going to make you want to be eat more in an hour. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Jane. Hey, Jane. She says, if you can eat butter and it comes from cream, then why can't you have cream in your coffee? Okay. So a couple reasons. Number one, cream is much easier to overeat than butter. I mean, just think about... Can you, how easy is it to drink a tablespoon, an ounce, or four ounces of heavy whipping cream? And how easy would it be to eat four tablespoons of butter? Yeah. Also, so when you make butter, you end up separating out some of the milk in the form of having all your lactose, which is your sugar. So when that comes out, out comes the carbs. So heavy whipping cream has roughly 0.4 carbs 
per tablespoon. Butter actually, believe it or not, does have carbs. Did you know that? I did not know that until this week. It is 0 0.0125 carbs per tablespoon. So even an entire stick of butter has 0.1 carbs. So if you wanted to look at just the carb aspect of it, you would need to eat four sticks of butter to get the same amount of carbs in just one tablespoon or like of heavy whipping cream that really puts four it in perspective. sticks to get one to get the same amount of carbs as a tablespoon of heavy whipping cream so you're not going to be able to overdo the butter in that way so that is just one of the biggest things but honestly i can overdo heavy whipping cream i can't overdo butter i I think it's just, you, you know, a preference. Mm -hmm. I think that as we work it out, you know, your your palate changes. Right. My palate for heavy whipping cream was pretty high. Yeah. It really was. So when it's just not a thing and you have to find another way, I, I don't feel it natural to just replace the amount of heavy whipping cream that I was using in my coffee with that exact equal amount of butter. Right. If that makes sense. But the flavor is there. But the flavor is there with way less, you know, amount. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Michelle said, Rachel, what changed or is different with less coffee? Because that's my hang up. It's interesting because I used to really let coffee boss me around. And I would, I think a lot of my excuses have been worked out. Almost like I can't start my day. I can't be expected to adult. I can't, you know, be present in a meeting that I have to go to if I don't have my coffee. Like my coffee was my permission slip to to do my day mm -hmm. like i've been able to wake up without coffee i have been able to attend meetings and do the things that i need throughout the day without being um you know propped up by, by coffee so i en have enjoyed my coffee but i haven't you know i no longer have the headaches and um the, the the anger that i that i used to have when i really had worked myself up to two pots a day and then suddenly don't have it it's definitely a detox that you have to go through mm -hmm. um when and i think that's whenever you know you're trying to work something out of your day i think that i had worked that bliss point um of caffeine to such a high level that anything less than just an inappropriate amount that anybody, I mean, they're, I could go to Starbucks and tell them, you know, I'm drinking two pots of coffee a day and they'd be like, you need to slow down, right? right? So I'm very glad that I've been through that detox and now I, I'm enjoying my cup of coffee, but I'm not letting it, you know, choose the agenda yeah. for the day. And the bottom line is this, we shouldn't have anything in our life that has that much control over us. Yeah. Is that hard to say? Yes. Is it probably a little mean of me to say? Yes. But I have to admit to myself, something that has always, even on keto, had a control over me is diet soda. I And for two years, before I really discovered Zevia, because I wasn't willing to pay for Zevia, my attitude with diet soda, like Diet Coke, was... I've given up everything else. Yeah. I've given up all the sugar, all the pasta, all the bread. Why do I have to give up this? Yeah. And so I was like, this is my reward for being good over there. But what happened, it made me dependent on that. So having even this now, it's allowing me to go, nothing else is the boss of me. No food is going to be the boss of my life. And the second a food becomes a boss of my life, I'm not saying I'm going to eliminate it forever, but I'm definitely gonna take a step back until it's not the boss of me anymore. Well, and I think that, yeah, because we've said something so foolish. Like, I'm sure you've said to yourself, like, I can't begin cutting grass today unless I have a Diet Coke. Oh, yeah. And it's like, that. that is so, not, like, not true and easily like put down right mm -hmm. because you you proved i can cut grass without a diet coke like right. you know so i think it's good for us to look at and say it's not that i can't do without coffee it's that i haven't wanted to right. until this moment that's right okay let's take a quick commercial break then we'll come back with all the facebook comments 
I am so tired of this thing and my phone yeah. saying scam likely. Apple, can you just please make it so that when scam likely shows up, don't, don't even ring my phone. Yeah, I don't even want to I'm so know. tired of scam likely, write to voicemail. Here's the funny thing. I just showed Caleb yesterday that I have begun getting um, the recommendations about my um, car, extended car warranty in different languages now. So it's like, it's like they thought, well, maybe we're not speaking the same language. So I'm just going to try a variety of different languages and maybe that will make it feel more important for you to call me back. Well, my one that I was always getting was the text messages saying, do you want to sell your home? And so I took a page out of Steve's book and started responding. Absolutely. Starting price is $750,000. <laughs> so now they don't text me anymore. They email me. Right. But so like, but they're not texting me anymore. I'll take it. <laughs> Okay, let's get into the Facebook comments. The first one is from Julie. Hey, Julie. Julie said, my husband and I are starting keto and I'm wondering, do you need to count calories on the keto diet? I know I need so much protein and fat, but was not sure about calories. Great question. Really good question. The answer is no. I'm gonna direct you to Dr. Barry's video right up here of why counting calories is stupid. Now, we were talking about this on live the other day. And the thing is, is that you get a lot of people who say you need to count calories. Calorie restriction is the only way you're going to lose weight. It's simply not true. Rachel has proved that she lost weight, but ultimately gained weight. I think we've all proven that because when you restrict calories too much, you screw up your metabolism and now you're gonna pay for it for years. But the bottom line is if you wanna count fat calories, and carb calories, I'm in support of that because you can overeat fat even on the keto lifestyle. You can gain weight on the keto lifestyle. I've proven that, but protein calories don't count. Why? Because your body doesn't use protein for energy unless it absolutely has to and it doesn't want to. Why? It takes too much energy to turn protein into energy. So take a, think about this. Your car gets four miles to a gallon if mm -hmm. you're on fat or carbs. So I, I know it's a weird analogy, but let's just say you're feeding your car fat and carbohydrates and it gets four miles per gallon. It will take protein to go, but it's going to go one mile for every four gallons that you give it. That the car it doesn't is, want to do that. It's smarter than us. The car is smarter. So that's why counting calorie is is stupid. Follow the one-to-one -one ratio. We have a video on that. It's gonna be up here. Bronson talks about it a lot. Um, and basically what we're gonna tell you is, what is your ultimate goal weight? What is the stupid, ridiculous weight that your doctor says you should weigh? You know, the books say I should weigh 168 pounds. If you've seen my pictures at my lowest of 182, I look really, really skinny. Not I right. can't even imagine myself 15 to 20 pounds lighter right. than that. But take that ridiculous weight that they say is your goal and eat that many grams of protein per day. Then on the other side, you're going to eat up to that much in fat and carbs combined. Don't go ridiculous on a carb, say say 20 to 30 total carbs per day and then the rest in fat. So for example, let's say your goal is 150 pounds. You eat 150 grams of protein and then you would eat say 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrates, total carbohydrates and then you'd eat 120 to 130 grams of fat. You don't have to hit that amount, but that's your limit. If you start going above that limit, you're going to maintain or gain weight most right. likely. So that's why just go that way and you'll be fine. Don't count calories, counting calories is stupid. Uh, next one is from Callie. Hey Callie, I just weighed like I would at the doctor's office and I'm 132 pounds, 20 pounds to go until I hit my goal weight. She is so much better than me. Can you ever imagine getting on the scale without clothes? My I, doctor would freak out. Well, I want to get naked at the doctor's office. Yeah, Absolutely. I, and I will wear- Can to, we do that? I will wear the lightest outfit to the doctor's office, like borderline inappropriate, always with flip flops because yes, in my brain, shoes weigh 10 pounds. True confession time, true confession uh -oh. time. So of course, years ago, I, I've pretty much done every diet in the world. The only thing I never did was Weight Watchers because I always thought Weight Watchers was silly. I did that one for you. And, but I did Nutrisystem back in the late 80s 
when Nutrisystem actually had storefronts, I did Nutrisystem. And I did Jenny Craig, and I did the gym thing, and I went to the doctor, and whenever I had to get weighed, mm -hmm. I would go in there in the lightest clothes, like a pair of basketball shorts, no underwear, because underwear is gonna weigh something, Obviously. right? You have to go in with like, like a lightweight tank top shirt because adding sleeves is going to add weight. Yeah. Um, no wallets. Like you just go in there, took like, my earring out. Cause I used to have an earring would take that out. He's a pirate. I would wear flip flops. Yeah. Because like now I, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to suck on barefoot. Cause I don't even have socks. It's on. like a toddler dress themselves. And I would even sometimes take a diuretic, right? Ha who's done that? When you had to get weighed, you take a water pill one to two days before yeah. so that your doctor or the weight loss place think, now who was I fooling? Well, and you were just, you know, you're-, you're Now I had to keep it up every week. I was gonna say, and you're doing this for yourself. Right. You're going to this, you're having this weight loss journey. It's for you. Right. You're The, the person that works at Nutrisystem is not impressed with you I would be all. so ashamed. Oh my gosh, I gained weight. They're going to just scream at me. Why, well, they weren't gonna scream at me. I was giving them money every single yeah, week, they, right? I'm very They want nice. me to gain weight. I'm very nice to someone who's just like handing me a fist, fistful of cash and PS, for that Nutrisystem food, I, it's like, as you say the word, I could taste it. Uh, it, was it was like, horrible. it always seemed regurgitated to me. It, it looked regurgitated and it tasted And it was like, it was heavy. Yeah. Do you remember that? Oh, I do. Ugh. Okay, next one is from Lee. Hey Lee, they say, I am a, a ketovore carnivore hot mess. Mm -hmm. I have done all of the diets in my long history of dieting, including Weight Watchers, Atkins, low carb, keto. Joe's just don't eat it cabbage soup fad and many other fads. I did cabbage soup and about pooped myself. It was so gassy. I am recently since August 20th, 2021, trying to do this for health first and weight loss second. I still need to lose about 15 to 20 pounds, but more importantly, I need to control inflammation in my body. At this point, I am trying an alternating ketovore carnivore way of eating but I feel like I'm floundering. I have done a lot of research and the more research, the more confused I am. I have no clue if I'm doing the right things. I am definitely low carb. I stay around 10 to 15 total carbs, but the inflammation is still there. Better, but still there. And so is the fat. The scale and the tape measure are not moving. Something is wrong. Anyway, here I am. I am looking for tips and support. And yes, still looking for information. I see you having to go up over the I have television. to go like there's a little okay. cut off. Here's what I'm going to suggest. I'm going to suggest you try this beef, bacon, butter, and egg. Or some other variation. One of the things that makes this so awesome is it's very restrictive. And what does very restrictive do? It allows us to eliminate. Yeah. So, and again, you can't do it for a week. You need to do this for a couple of weeks. You need to say, you know what? I'm gonna do this for two weeks to a month. See what happens. If you're still having inflammation, maybe eliminate something out of that. Maybe just do beef, bacon, and butter. Maybe you're having an issue with eggs. Most people who have dairy problems don't have a problem with butter because you've taken all of the lactose out. So, and even there, sometimes if somebody, the very small population that does have a problem with butter, they can handle ghee. So, but that's what I, you need to really do an elimination diet for a while. You might wanna follow Nisha over on Nisha yeah. Loves It because it's something she had to do for her Hashimoto's. But inflammation can come from things like having vegetables. Uh, having nightshades, some of the spices. That's why Dr. Barry says the best thing to do is eliminate everything, do that for a while, and then what you would do is slowly add back. So you've been carnivore for say a month, and I mean strict carnivore, like these four things and that's it. Then you can say, you know what, I'm gonna add some chicken in. Let me see how chicken does. Give the chicken with everything else a week or two weeks. Does the inflammation go up, does it go down? Okay, no, everything's good. Okay, now I'll add in some spices, you know, and different types of spices and start figuring out what is causing inflammation. Make sure you're looking at oils too. The number one thing before you do anything, whether you are keto, you are carnivore, even if you're on the standard American diet, is get rid of the seed oils. The seed oils, we can eat perfect, and I did it. You will lose weight eating seed oils. Yeah. But you're not gonna feel good. No. I lost 100 pounds eating Hellman's mayonnaise and eating bad canola oil. 
I didn't feel better trashy. until I dumped all of that stuff out because that stuff is causing the inflammation. And there's no way until you isolate like how to determine what is that ingredient. I have a friend that was getting hospitalized over and over again and she knew it had something to do with her diet after much investigation, she found out what was hurting her was cilantro. Do you know how long it took her to figure out it was cilantro? That is not where your mind goes. It's right. like, oh, I need to work out the cilantro. That's probably the thing that's putting me in the hospital. Right. No, she had to so super restrict until she figured out, okay, now add this ingredient. Okay, yep. now add this ingredient, especially since it's not just weight loss you're concerned about, it is about your health and how you feel, that's that's the way to do it, is to isolate and then add in and then test it for a week. Okay, what is the ingredient that is the problem? Yeah, even chicken. Chicken could be very inflammatory because chicken is very high in omega-6, even pasture-raised chicken. So it, that, you really need to narrow it down and only eat a couple of foods. We've seen a lot of mess with people like, I can't handle beef. Have you given it a month? A right. month of only beef. Let your body adjust to it. And don't get freaked out by the doctors that are gonna tell you eating beef is gonna cause cancer and eating beef is going to, you know, like stuck, you know, stuff up your colon and everything else. We anything you eat, you need to give it two weeks to a month to really know how does this impact my body. Not a day, not two days, not even a week. We really have to give it some time. Uh, next one is from Joseph. Hey, Joseph. Joseph said, I'm curious for the BBBE sardines. I generally try and eat some every once in a while so that I get more omega-3s since I don't buy grass-fed beef. I'm sure it doesn't really matter since it's really a challenge for myself, but is that something that has been asked of Dr. Barry? So again, Dr. Barry said he chose these four things because they're things that uh, we don't binge on, which... I don't know I don't what sardines. to think about anybody who might be binging on sardines. My grandfather sure liked them. I'm sure it's okay, but you got to you're going to have to make sure about the oil. We're really trying to stick to the intention of the challenge, which was just eat these four things. If you're worried about omega threes though, and not eating grass fed beef, there's plenty of studies. the 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 amount of extra omega threes that are, you're going to find in grass fed beef is so negligible. Don't worry about it. Yeah. The better thing to do is just make sure you're not eating the things that are really high in omega-6s, like a lot of poultry, like some of the bad seed oils and things like that. That's the real problem with that stuff. Also, it's a great time to remind everybody that if you are eating canned fish, tuna fish and sardines and mackerel and all of those wonderful things that we have because of canned food, make sure that they're packed in water mm -hmm. or make sure that they're packed in, in olive oil that you trust and not the things that are packed in, in vegetable oil. Really scrutinize that ingredient because you will be looking at some inflammation. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Lee. Hey, Lee. Said, my day of eating consisted of bacon, pork, eggs, and beef. I'm so full and not the right? least bit hungry. Yay. I'm still new to the group, and so I'm going to save my weight and my 36, 24, 36 for another time. It's still hard for me to talk about, even with a cool bunch like all of you. Here's to another best proper eating buffet. Oh, I like that. And, you know, that's the thing just because somebody else is sharing their scale like i'm always amazed by autumn like i want to be that person that every single day could show the chart and be like here's where i am right now here's when i'm up here's when i'm down and it's so frightening for me and i'm so because you feel like a failure i feel like a failure you know if 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 i shared that i feel like it would it would drive me crazy i'm so thankful for her because that kind of data collection is something that a lot of people need for me, it's it's derailing. Mm -hmm. I, I almost, I can't do it personally. I admire it, but I can't do it. So just because other people are sharing, you know, the number or the measurements, don't ever feel, um, you know, like you have to do that. Like right. if you don't do that, then you're out of the club because we're all, you know, on a different journey and we all have different hangups. That's it's right. different. Yep. Uh, next one is from Jean again. Hey, Jean. Jean said, I have a question about ketone levels. I bought a keto meter from BioCoach and my first level reading was a 0.3 after following a keto lifestyle diet for 10 days or so. Should I be pleased or concerned with that level? According to literature, I should be between a 0.0 and a 3.0, but 3.3 seems low. Okay. Um, Stop I happening. Have an, I have an, if you have a 0.3, you've got ketones. That's yeah. the bottom line. Okay. 
Ketosis is a way for your body to not starve. If you're at a point three, you've got ketones. Yeah. And that's what I'm like. I, I really get frustrated with people who say, if you're not a point five, you're not in ketosis. If you are truly following a ketogenic or a carnivore or a ketovore lifestyle, and you are truly limiting your carbs and being honest with yourself. Yes. What do I mean by that? Not going, hey, this label of heavy whipping cream says zero carbs, but this one says a 0.5, so I'm gonna eat the zero one. You're still eating carbs. They're just lying to you, which right. makes you lie to yourself. If you're, and, and counting total carbs. I'm, when I say be honest with yourself, don't eat 50 or 80 total carbs, but it's only 10 net carbs and say, I'm doing really good. Because why? Companies lie to you, yeah. okay? So count, all, count them all, and at the end of the day, the worst thing that's gonna happen is you ate less carbs than you thought you did. So if you're truly following the diet, and you're not eating more than 15 to 20 or even 30 total carbs, your body has to turn to fat for fuel. It has to. And so don't worry about the meter. The only reason to need high ketones if you need it for brain function. Right. Right. And there are people in our group like Matreya who do keto for brain function. They're worried about things like epilepsy or they're worried about Alzheimer's or things like that. If you are trying to lose weight, you don't need high ketones. And honestly, it may even hinder you. Okay. Your body's first line of it. If you look at oxidative priority, oxidative priority is when you eat, the first thing your body's gonna do is use the protein, not for fuel, but for the amino acids and everything. It's then gonna start eating the diet, to, for, then it's gonna eat carbohydrates. So that's why we don't want a carbohydrate. You go alcohol and carbohydrates. That's what we wanna have as little to none of that as possible. After there's no carbs, which if you're only eating 20 to 30 carbs, it's gonna be very quick. It's going to turn to the dietary fat, which yeah. you do need some to function. After that, it's going to turn to your body fat, okay? And then you have your ketones. So you've got a long way to go. You want to get, you want to burn fat. My ketones are never higher than a 0.5, but I'm not, right now we're eating zero total carbs. You know, maybe one or two if we're having eggs. My body has to be burning fat and that's all that matters. And so outside of brain function, what you talked about, like for medical, like you need a, a certain medical level of ketones because of you're treating something specific. If someone says to you, um, you are not like in ketosis unless you are got a two or a 3.0, check their social media and see if they're not trying to sell exogenous ketones. Mm. Because a lot of times they may be wanting to motivate you to do that because there's something that they're financially gaining right. by by pushing ketones. Right. And that's why, you know, with the meters, they're telling you you have to be a 0.5 for nutritional ketosis, which actually isn't true because all that's doing is measuring blood ketones. What is it measuring? Excess ketones that your body's not using. Right. So if you test after a workout, well, your body will have used all those ketones up. It's going to be really low. So are you telling me that you shouldn't work out because working out is going to lower your ketones? No. That's one of the reasons that we don't really talk about blood testing. And we've actually started working with a company that we're doing a bunch of testing on right now called Biosense because they have a device that's been medically tested that can tell you, are you burning fat right. now we're still testing it out on ourselves to really see how it works but blood ketones for just excess ketones unless you need it for brain function it's just not important what's important is that you're not eating carbs and that your body is burning fat for fuel uh next one is from laura hey laura she says happy day last year lost at uh 54 pounds i lost 50 pounds oh at age 54 she lost 50 pounds and was working on my a1c um, down 6.5 was my last one done. Fast forward to 2021 and my life derailed. Tragic loss of my 21-year-old oh. grandson, then surgery, which they had to remove part of my pancreas and spleen due to a possibility of cancer. Luckily, pre-cancer and don't gain much at all. However, A1C went to 7.8 in four months pre-surgery. 
and on insulin and metformin, I went afterwards, understandably with surgery. I am so determined to get off these meds, still stuck on weight, 80 to 100 more to go, and fighting the addiction part. However, today, after five months post-surgery, A1C was back down to 6.6. Yes. Tomorrow, jumping on my challenge to help me with the sugar addiction I'm still struggling with. I do love this way of eating, and it's time to get serious. Laura, I am so, so sorry for the tragic loss of your precious grandbaby. Yeah, you've got this. You're on the right track. You've got an awesome family. We love you. In the Two you. Crazy Ketos family here. And we know sugar addiction is real. I will, to the day I die, say that sugar is the most addictive substance. Yes. And having this, and when we look at whether it's a sugar addiction or just a food addiction, when it comes to a food addiction, Rachel says it all the time, we need a little bit of our addiction every day. Yeah. And this is not to discount somebody who is a drug addict or an alcoholic. Not at all. But when you have a recovering drug addict or an alcoholic, they don't need that every day. They may mentally say that, but they can survive if they never have alcohol I again. I can never not go into the grocery store ever in my life. Right. We can never not eat. So we're struggling with this addiction of, we have a food addiction issue, we overeat here, but we have to eat to survive. Right. So that makes it much more difficult. And the only way you're gonna be able to get through that is honestly, with support from people. And Abby yeah. talks about like pro probably all of us need some type of a counseling. And yeah. you know, not as professional counselors, but you have a family group here that can at least help hold your hand through this. And listen to your story. Yep. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Lori. Hey Lori. Lori said, if everything around you seems dark, look again, you may be the light. Wow, how encouraging that is. And we do each have an opportunity to have an impact in our realm of influence. There are people looking to you and they admire you as a person. They love you. Maybe it's children, maybe it's you know other family members, maybe it's your church group, maybe it is somebody in your community, your neighbors. You have an opportunity to make a difference in the lives around you. Yep. Now we have one more and that's gonna be from Pat. Hey Pat. Pat said, I'm planning on trying BBB and E next week since I have stuff going on this weekend. It has made me look at what I'm presently eating and realizing that I've really fallen for the keto extras. Things we think we need to keep us from feeling deprived like sauces and treats. I realize that I consume way too much alternative sweeteners, electrolytes, teas, and chocolate, for etc. I'm looking forward to the next step of my journey to further my education and see what my body really needs versus what I emotionally need. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your experiences. Two and a half years on this path and I'm still learning. Pat, thanks so much for sharing this. I am very excited about going into this holiday season because we have taken this time to do the very hard thing of looking at our diet and what we need, what we want, and what is, you know, motivated out of some other kind of negative emotion. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to go into Thanksgiving, Christmas, Halloween, thinking, you know, nostalgia is going to take over and I'm just going to mindlessly eat something and mindlessly do something because it's just what I'm used to. And that's what we do this time of year. Right. You know, I would love to replace some of, of the negative things that I, you know, do during the holidays um, with some new traditions that will propel my health goals and help me to, to do what I want to do, which is spend quality time with family and friends. Right. So we can't go into the holiday season with a clear mind if we don't clear up our mind. That's so right. that begins in the pantry. And maybe there are some things that, you know, I've let them stay because they say keto on them, that it's time for me to scrutinize and, and just do better with. And that doesn't mean that I'm a bad person. That doesn't mean that I'm not a strong person. Honestly, being courageous enough to take a look under the hood and say, what's going on in here? And maybe it's time to tweak some things. I think that's very brave. Yeah. Well, that is gonna be this week's Keto on the Couch. We thank everybody for joining us. We hope you guys are enjoying the beef, butter, bacon, and egg challenge. Even if you're not joining in on us, we hope you're yeah. enjoying the vlogs. Uh, we are vlogging every single day, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and you hit that bell button so you're notified. Because right now, we actually have 
two videos a day going up many days, one in the afternoon for the vlog, as well as one in the morning for our normal videos. Now, don't forget to join us on our live stream this week, but this week, our live stream is going to be a little bit different. If you are watching this when this premieres on Monday, rather than our live stream being on Thursday, we're going to be doing it on Wednesday. Why? Because we're going to Universal Studios with Anthony and we want to make sure that we can give you guys the time, but also spend some time with our son. So that live stream, again, make sure you hit the bell button. You'll be notified. We'll be on Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. Well, Wednesday. Or yeah, Wednesday, normal. Wednesday, yeah. that's right, Wednesday. It will be on Wednesday that? instead of Thursday. Right. So if you like seeing videos like this, check out some of our other videos, which I have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.